Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 577, Knocking Him Down. And this is actually reflecting or reviewing the year part four. Yes, actually part four. We'll get into the details in a moment. And topic today is what have you given? Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful, high-achieving women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And over the last couple of years, I've done a lot of these, and particularly for the last probably 550, every day I've done these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Some of these topics are for women only, some are for both, and this is one of those. <laughs> so, let's jump in, shall we? So again, this is episode number 577, and the topic today is reflecting on the year, part four, what have you given? And to quickly give you cliff notes from what happened before, um, three parts ago, <laughs> part one was four, this is the fourth, so Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, Thursday <laughs> I did the first part without knowing it was the first part, um, which was what have, what are you releasing? Second part was um, on Friday, which was, um, what are you grateful for? Yesterday was part three, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm, you have to go watch them, I wanna give you with the cliff notes of what they are. Um, part, yesterday was part three, which is what have you accomplished or allowed? And today's part four, yay, part four. Um, there may be, I'm thinking it's gonna be part five tomorrow, since it's the last day of the year tomorrow, to wrap up, wrapping up the year. And so today's topic is what have you given? And I've got a feeling tomorrow it might be about receiving, but that'd be a sneak peek. So, what have you given this year? And I'm gonna put this into context because I'll share some of my own experiences and examples first. And I'd love to have you reflect on your own for your own benefit, your own upliftment, and maybe even your own, that's what I'm looking for. Self-appreciation, there's a good word, appreciation. So. And in a couple of days, I know I can definitely speak up to what I've given, which is one is giving in service. Now, I'm sure many of you are people who have given of service in some ways too, whether it was feeding the homeless or working with um, animal shelters or just giving money to somebody in the street or, as I do, give to your church or, or give time to your spiritual center, spiritual center in my case. And most Sundays, because I've actually had other events to be at this year, but at most Sundays this year, I have been pretty much spending my mornings in service to my community at Agape, my spiritual center, which frankly, I think I'm doing selfishly <laughs> because my opportunity to serve and give and provide um, upliftment to people and help them be happier and joyful and uplifting is a pleasure. And I get my jollies from that, so to speak. I mean, it's crude way of saying it, but that's what I do. The second thing I speak to, which is this, my Facebook Lives, having done one every day for this last year and beyond and both ends, um, I feel like I've given a lot to, oh, it sounds, sounds crass and maybe egotistical to say the world, but certainly given out advice that people have had benefit from. I've gotten a lot of messages here and on YouTube and directly as well from people who've gotten value from what I've said. Well, what was that? That was interesting. Okay. My screen just went bing. I hope it didn't for you, but it did for me, which is kind of weird. I hope this is going to go through okay, because I'm set. This was very strange. Okay. Staying on track and trusting that this is working, you can hear me. By the way, if you can hear me, can you just like say so in the comments? I see people watching. Just want to make sure you can hear me and maybe even see me too because my screen just did something very weird for a second there. So continuing right along, for me, giving is part of the process. Now, I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I already know this. Part five will be about receiving this year. But I'll make sure you have both sides of the conversation in place because for me, it's... Well, actually, it's not for me. It's the way, law, the way the law works, is that if you give more than you receive or you receive more than you give, you're out of balance. And so, and it's not about measuring exactly, like giving enough to receive enough, and you have to give five minutes here to receive five minutes there. It's not like that. But you've got to be in the flow and the cycle of giving and receiving. It's actually a spiritual law about abundance, which I'm not going to get into right now, but it's a teaching that I've learned years ago that I'm realizing is present right now. So today's about the giving side. And it's also because I'm saying wrapping up the year is reflecting on where maybe you could have given more or maybe we overgave. Now, let's bring this into the relationship context for a second. 
If you're in a relationship that's ended, sorry, if you were in a relationship that's ended, have you in fact found a place where, um, let me say this. where you felt yourself drained by giving too much. I'm just, I'm editing what I want to say because it's not coming out cleanly as I'm trying to put it out there. So trust me as I'm processing what's coming through, this is the way my, by the way, if you haven't seen my Facebook lives before, this happens a lot. When I'll be downloading something and I haven't got a way of articulating it out to you in a way that to me makes sense. Then again, maybe I shouldn't even edit it, maybe I should let it come through. But anyway, so back to this giving piece. If you've been in past relationships, and this may include, well, this will include friendships, family dynamics, business and relationships too, where maybe you felt the relationship was, was lopsided, where you were giving more than you were receiving. And relationship too, especially, especially romantic relationship, because that's the investment energy of love and, to be honest, a certain desire, a certain sense of wanting from somebody else. So let me throw another... <laughs> okay, let me throw another piece in the puzzle, which is, did you give to give or did you give to get? And for some of you, that's like, oh God, ooh, didn't think about that one. So the teaching here, the lesson here, the, the, the insight here is, you know what I'm going to do? Hang on a second. I've got a feeling my phone's doing something, so I'm going to plug it in, give you some, give some juice. That might hopefully, there we go. All right. Okay. I think we're good. All right, continue right along. And by the way, again, if you could put in the comments that you can hear me okay and see me okay, I'd appreciate that because I, I have no, the camera's not giving me feedback right now because something happened, I think it was reacting to me. So if you can do that, I'd appreciate it. And by the way, this is Facebook Live first. It's gonna be on YouTube later on. So if you're watching it on YouTube, it was on Facebook Live first. And I'll tell you about those links at the end of the broadcast. So back to that point, because it's a doozy of a point. In your past relationships, romantic, business, any other relationship, did you give to give or did you give to get? I would suggest that if you did the latter, you may have found yourself being um, out of line. You can see and hear me perfectly. Thank you, Susan, I appreciate that. And nice to see you in my broadcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> perfectly, that's <was> nice. <laughs> but see, the thing about it is in relationships, it's very tempting to think that you can get what you want by giving with an agenda. And I'll say it this way. Um, oh, do you want to do that? Yeah, I think I do. For the men watching, if you're in a heterosexual relationship with a woman, if you try to give to give to get, she will notice really quickly because women generally are much more plugged in intuitive than we are as men, just to be self-exposing, so to speak. Now, some of us men have gotten sensitive enough to notice when we are being pulled into a give to get dynamic because it sucks, literally, figuratively, it sucks the energy from you, so it's not good to have. So my point about this is when you're giving, and let me say this, if you gave last year for a place of just giving from your overflow, selfless, joyful, celebratory, unconditional, that sort of thing, awesome. If you give to serve, and you know, I did lie, didn't I? Hmm. <laughs> Let me go back and change one thing. I said about one as a agape how I love giving because I feel like it's being selfish. That's not giving to get. That's giving and the overflow is reward. So if you're giving that way, that's okay. And I'm not cheating there. I'm telling the truth. That when you give so much that you feel joyful and uplifted, that's the benefit of giving selflessly. When you give to get, usually there's an agenda, there's a hook, and it also never matches up to what you really want anyway. Here's a little key, by the way. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you give so you can get something from them, but you don't ask what you don't ask what you want specifically, the odds are likely you won't get what you want anyway. See, here's the thing: if you want something from somebody, and I'll talk about this tomorrow in more detail about the receiving side, there's one thing I would recommend: ask. <laughs> it sounds so simplistic, but so many people I know in relationship, especially actually in every relationship, romantic friends, all these things, we don't always go to somebody and say, "I need something from you. Can you help me? I'd love this, please." We normally go, I'll give you this stuff and, and maybe you'll give something in return. Romantically, we have this bad habit of thinking that, we're mind, that our partners are mind readers. It's a really, uh, what's the word we're looking for? It's an error in approach, I'll be polite. Because we are not mind readers. Unless, you marry, unless you're dating or married to a telepath, which most of us are not, it's gonna be very hard for your partner to know what you want without you telling them. 
So giving to get is a dangerous, no, 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 it's not dangerous. Ineffective is probably a better way of putting it, way of playing. Relationships in my, in my universe are built on trust, on authentic connection, on communication, on honesty, and a sense of openness you can give and openly receive. Again, I'll talk about this tomorrow in the receiving side because there's got to be a balance in the conversation. But my, my invitation to you is look at, in particularly in relationship, but also in other areas too, and particularly, no, excuse me, not particularly, in relationship, other areas too, including where you serve, because service is a big piece of this. How much did you give last year, this past year, excuse me, this current year that's still on value for another day? How much did you really serve, express, offer, and give from your overflow? Now, here's a piece I was going to throw in there. This is, what, this is what was coming up earlier. I'm presupposing that when you give from your overflow, that you're already filled to overflowing in the first place. And for some of you, that may be a challenge. And I'll talk about that more tomorrow as well, but I'm going to put, you know, I'll put the links in the comments, of course. For some of you, one of the reasons why it's been challenging to give is because you haven't learned how to fill up your own tanks first, your own, your own fuel tank, so to speak, your own lovability. Because part of the giving comes from your sense of loving. Because we generally give when we tend, when we love more. We give to both people we serve because we care about them. We give to our partners because we love them. We give to family members because we care as well. We don't. If we give with prejudice, that's not from a place of generosity. That's from a place of, well, giving to get in a way. So I'm just thinking I need to. No, I'm not going to take that one apart. So here's the thing. Part of the challenge we face is we forget to fill up our own tanks first to give. Because when we give to get, or we give as a needy place to come from, we tend to drain ourselves and become worn out. My reminder, my suggestion, and my and the link I put in the comments for my invitation is to learn how to love yourself more. The self-love practice I, I promote and I share in my broadcast is a simple practice that will that's designed to help you become more able to give effortlessly and to receive from yourself. Yes, you can receive from yourself when you really open up that space. And it's a trap we fall into when we think that it's up to somebody else to feed us. And I'm already starting to bleed into other tomorrow's conversation. Okay, let me cut that one off. Self-love is a key. I'll put the link in the comments for you to so you can check it out if you want. I'll definitely talk about it tomorrow because that's a big part of this journey of receiving. Leave that one alone um, for now. So I invite you to look at your past journey this year of 2018 and Consider for yourself how much you gave from your overflow. And if you gave from lack, how are you going to do that differently going forward into next year? So there's a contrast here. If you did give from your overflow, wonderful. I'd love you if you have some thoughts you want to share in the comments what those were. And if you did, in fact, let me put it this way, because it's always homework when I do these broadcasts. If you haven't already thought about it, I'd like you to look back at this year, as I did in the last three broadcasts, to say to yourself, or look at your life and go, so how did I give this past year? Where did I play, serve, inspire, add to people's lives from a joyful place? And if you didn't, may I suggest you look at doing that next year? <laughs> Is there any more for this? This one seems to be sort of fairly circular. I'm gonna, I know there's a part of some loose ends I dropped in this broadcast. I'll put them in tomorrow's broadcast for the receiving side. I already know what's coming up and I don't wanna, I wanna keep these separate for now because that will make it more of a complete five-part series that ends on New Year's Eve. How perfect. Um, if you want to find out more about my work, I'll put a link in the comments as well for a discovery session with me so you can find out how I work. Um, and with that, reminders of the replays and everything else. So thank you for watching, by the way. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in, in below and I'll respond when I sign off. If you're watching this on YouTube, same thing applies. I'll put links, sorry, I'll put the links for the replays of my first four parts, first three parts in the YouTube replay. I won't put them here. Maybe I will. You know what, I will. I'll put it in both places, why not? And for those of you looking for my broadcast, this is on my, my personal page first on Facebook, and then goes into my business page on Facebook. So the two differences are, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby is my personal page, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author is my business page where all of them sit. And you'll see all my replays there more easily because that's about the only thing on my page for now that I've been putting out there consistently. Secondly, <coughs> excuse me, Secondly, the replays you can also find on my YouTube channel, which are easy to search, actually. And my YouTube channel, like most of my social media, is my name, Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in there is a, a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where you can find all these broadcasts listed 
from newest to oldest. And you can search through them, look at titles that are juicy, some of them are, and uh, pick up some keys and tips. And thirdly, I do actually have a podcast which I'm slowly rolling out that's basically the audio versions of these loaded up to my podcast, which is also called Messages for the Masculine. That's on iTunes. You can subscribe to that. And that's really for more convenience when you want to listen to a podcast format because then you can load them in. I've noticed that when you're watching YouTube or on Facebook, if you turn off your phone, it goes away. Um, with podcasts, you can let them run. So that was kind of the idea of putting the audio versions up there so you can listen to them when you're jogging, driving, running around, whatever you're doing. See, I'm here to please and help you out. So tomorrow's part five will be about receiving, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, and that'll be that. I appreciate you watching as always. Again, any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I think. It's New Year's Eve. I've got to figure out my party schedule. I think it'll be 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. And I invite you to join me then. Thanks for watching. Please share this out. By the way, please share this out with anybody you think should watch this. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.